Hello and welcome back to Linear Algebra, the video course where we in particular discuss determinants. And indeed, in today's part 47, we will discuss the so-called rule of Saru for determinants. This is a special case of the Leibniz formula, but for three dimensions. For higher dimensions, it's not possible to use this formula. However, in the next video, we will discuss the so-called Laplace expansion. However, before we go into the details, you already know, first I want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. In fact, your reward for supporting me is the book version of this video course, some PDF versions for all other videos and quizzes for all videos. Just click the link in the description to download these things. Ok, then let's start with the topic by recalling the definition of the determinant, which is the Leibniz formula. We have discussed that in the last video and please remember this formula originated from the fact that we want to see the determinant as a volume measure. Indeed, the definition says that the determinant of a square matrix is given by summing up all products with exactly n factors consisting of entries of the matrix. However, in this product, each row and each column is only allowed to be used once. Therefore, we can write this product in this form, where the column index here goes from 1 to n and the row index just permutes. This means that the indices j1 to jn also cover the whole set given by 1, 2 to n. Therefore, we call that a permutation of the set and all permutations are put into a set we call Sn. Hence, we just need to sum over all permutations here and then the only thing we need to add is the signum of the permutation. Often, it's also just called the sign or the signature of the permutation. And it's simply plus or minus 1, depending if we need an even or an odd number of transpositions to rearrange the permutation to the original one. Indeed, it's not so complicated and if you know the levi civita symbol, this epsilon symbol, then you know this is just a generalization of that. Ok, so there we have it, this is the general formula for the determinant of an n times n matrix. And now if we want to calculate it, the question is how many terms in the sum do we have? In other words, there we just have to calculate how many permutations exist for different n. In fact, for n is equal to 2, we already know not a lot can happen, we just have 1, 2 and 2, 1. So we only have two permutations and the whole formula is very simple. However, for n is equal to 3, you already find a lot more. You immediately find three different even permutations, where you just go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And in addition, on the other hand, we find three odd ones, where we go 2, 1, 3. This means in the 3 times 3 determinant, we already have six terms in the whole sum. Therefore, it's much harder to remember a quick rule to calculate it. In fact, you might remember that for the 2 times 2 case, it was easy to remember. It was just about taking both diagonals with different signs. In other words, you don't need the general Leibniz rule to calculate a 2 times 2 determinant. And a similar thing we have for the 3 times 3 case, and we will learn that today, it's called the rule of Saru. However, as a warning, I can already tell you, this monomic here is not applicable to n is equal to 4. Simply because we have way too many permutations now, because if you count them, you find 24. Indeed, you should recognize the general rule to count all the permutations is given by n factorial. So you see, the factorial comes in here very naturally. Moreover, then you should see, the numbers here really explode if n increases. Therefore, simple rules to remember all the permutations only exists for n is equal to 2 and n is equal to 3. Ok, then let's talk about this monomic, which is called the rule of Saru. So you see, it's named after a French mathematician, but it's not so complicated. Ok, so now we already know, we need a 3 times 3 matrix here. Therefore, let's fill in all the entries here and you already see, sometimes we write the indices with comma and sometimes without. Of course, it means the same thing and we only use the comma if there could be any confusion. 
Okay, and now I would say, let's apply the Leibniz formula by constructing these products. So for example, if we want a product where a11 is included, we are not allowed to include any of the elements in this column or in this row. Hence, then we have to use an entry from this lower right part here. For example, a22. And then you see, we are also not allowed anymore to use any of these elements here. Therefore, only a33 remains. In other words, multiplying the main diagonal gives us one product already. And indeed, you should see, it's a positive permutation. Therefore, the sign for this term in the sum is plus. Okay, then let's go to the next product and maybe now we use the diagonal below. However, there you see, one element is missing, so we have to continue this diagonal above. Therefore, in addition, we would also include the a13 element here. So you see, we just flip over here, but we still get a very nice diagonal. And also, you should see, this permutation has a positive sign as well. So therefore, we also add this product here in our sum. Okay, and then the last even permutation is given by this last diagonal here. So you see, we also flip over to fill in the diagonal. It's an even permutation, so we have a plus sign again. Moreover, you also know we have three odd permutations, so three minus signs as well. So let's already write them here, and then the question is, how do we get them in this picture? Indeed, in order to make everything more readable, let's write down the matrix again. Okay, and now what we do is that we take the diagonals in the flipped orientation. And then you see, this is a very nice permutation, and it's an odd one, so it has a minus sign here. And then you might already see that we can simply continue, so we get three diagonals here. So it's the same as before, and they all get a minus sign now. So finally, this here would be the last diagonal. Moreover, the important thing to note is that we have indeed six terms in the sum. This is good, because it means we didn't forget any permutation. And that's it, that's the whole rule of Saru. It tells you how you can calculate the determinant of a 3 times 3 matrix without forgetting any terms. Hence, it's something that one can quickly apply on paper. In other words, a computer will not have any advantage with this additional rule, but a human has. So in order to see this, let's look at an example. So there you see, there's our square matrix, and now we want to calculate the determinant. Therefore, the first thing you would do is to multiply the positive diagonals. And because in each product you only have three factors, it's easy to multiply that in your head. So first we have 1 times minus 1 times 1, so we have minus 1. So please note, we have a minus sign by the multiplication, but the sign of the permutation is still plus. So in other words, we don't flip the sign here. And now for the next one, we have 2 times 4 times 1, which is 8. And the last one is now 1 times 2 minus 2, so minus 4. Okay, so very nice, and then let's go to the odd permutations. So the first one is 1 times minus 1 times 1, so minus 1. So please note here, now we have minus minus 1. Then let's go to the next diagonal, which is minus 2 times 4 times 1. So it's simply minus 8. Okay, and then you see only one multiplication remains, which is 1 times 2 times 2. So the result is 4, but still we subtract it. So you see, we are finished, and in the last step we simply have to put everything together. However, you see, these terms here already cancel. Hence, only 8 remains, and this is our determinant of our 3 times 3 matrix here. Therefore, you should see, by remembering the rule of Saru, calculating a 3 times 3 matrix is simply applying a simple recipe. You don't need to remember the whole Leibniz formula for that. However, at the moment we still need it if you want to calculate a 4 times 4 determinant. So I point that out again, the rule of Saru is not applicable in this case. It's only because n is so small, the diagonals give us all the permutation. So please remember that for all instances where you have to calculate determinants. However, a rule that is applicable for larger n 
we will discuss in the next video. This will be the famous Laplace expansion and I hope that I will see you there. Have a nice day and bye.